Bonjour, welcome to another live stream edition of Cafe Day Renee. James here, joined once again by the star show, Mr. Renee Dupree. Renee, how you doing today? Madame et Messieurs, je vous souhaite la bienvenue au Carnival. Feels, uh, feels lonely here today, doesn't it? Compared to the other day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good fun. It was. Hopefully, we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot and hot shot it too much. I remember one time I, I said to you, uh, I think this was months ago, that one would be good if we could get like a OVW reunion show, be like 10 or 12 people at the same time. Oh, Jesus. That would be, be crazy yeah, <laughs> if we could do that. It would be hard to get a word in with so many people, right? Yeah. It's like they were like, I think I, t- I think it went well the other night. I think everyone had to write their own time to speak and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I thought it went really well because when I fought the five was, I'm like, wow, this is going to be chaotic. Well, surprisingly, it went really, really well. I'm still getting messages from people asking me when's the next stream. So I definitely, right. uh, definitely going to do that more often. I think the fans really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's surprising how many of the boys and girls actually uh, watches the shows. Like, I know quite a lot of them messages you, and a couple's message me. And it's amazing how popular the show's getting over with, you know, your colleagues or former colleagues. Well, the biggest fans are the people in the business. I mean, That's true. Yeah. Well, well, thanks everyone for joining us. Please hit the like button, support the channel, keep the lights on the place. And uh, yeah, well, hopefully you've enjoyed the show and we're easing towards 15k. I think we're about 14.6 at the minute. So nearly there, folks. Yeah, let's try to get to 15,000, hopefully get to 25,000 by the spring, summer so we can do drinks with Dupree. Uh, that'll definitely be a, I got a special, special plan for that. If you guys like the uh, the stream on this past Friday, you're going to love drinks with Dupree. So let's get to 25K. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Cool. What's going on in the news, man? Yeah, it's been a little bit quiet the last couple of days, but I managed to uh, scour the internet. So we did speak briefly about Fence McMahon coming back the other day. And then when Jason and Paul uh, came on the show, we thought Flip It would just talk to the fans, we'll answer the fan questions. So I thought, well, do a little bit more of a deep dive on it. So, obviously, he's made his return back to WWE. And um, basically, the word is that Vince McMahon said to the board that you, you ain't signing the company without me being back, basically. Mm. So, because he's still the owner. Well, he's always been there. And uh, he was right. Um, like, he brought some people back with him and three people got kicked out. Like, the people he brought back with him was uh, Michelle Wilson and George Barrios. Um, are they names that's familiar with you, or haven't you heard of them before? No. No, those are people I don't know. But, yeah. But so, that was like, that's like the business side of things, right? Like, the yeah. Corporate. Yeah. And um, basically, <laughs> he basically fired three people to fit himself and the two other people on. Uh, the three people who got fired was uh, Joan uh, Leon's uh, Dylan, Jeffrey Aspie, Alan M. Rexler. He fired them for the board of direct- uh, directors. And there was two other board members um, who actually re- resigned <laughs> because Vince came back. So, like, I've got a few more things to talk about it. But... Um, Basically, what he also said as well, because I think all in all, the allegations and the legal costs that came to between 15 and 17 million. Apparently, he has said to the board of directors he's going to pay out of his own pocket because WWE's insurance apparently doesn't cover <laughs> sexual allegations. Wow. <laughs> Damn. So that whole that little sexual quest of his cost him a lot of money man millions and millions and millions yeah shit oh, and he still has got he still got like two lawsuits on the go right oh yeah wow shit ah, more money more problems 
<laughs> That's true. Um, but apparently there was a Zoom meeting with uh, some of the wrestlers. Uh, like you said, believe half you see and nothing what you hear. But um, apparently some some wrestlers are upset that he's back, whereas others are just remaining shush and just doing their jobs. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. As soon as he gets in to the business side of it, people are already let go. So, I mean, six months ago, he was supposed to be gone for good, right? Yeah, well, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I think he he's so used to running everything and being the boss and controlling everything, control freak, that, it, trust me, if there's something he doesn't like on his television that makes him, aggravates him, mm-hmm. people will be let go. Trust me. Well, this is what makes life for me. Like I said, <clears throat> I'm just a fan end of the day. Yeah. But when we've got yourself commenting on the situation saying Fence will never be gone, Kurt Angle came on the show, Fence is still there, Fence will never be gone. Yeah, some people spouting off in the comments, oh, these don't know what they're talking about. These are all, uh, Fence is gone, Fence is gone. And I'm like, you're trying to tell people who's actually worked with Fence, who's worked in W3, what they know. <laughs> Like, you you and Kurt's knowledge, especially like all the other guests we've had on, safe to say you've got a better idea of Vince McMahon than the random fan on YouTube, for example. I don't, I don't listen to a lot of the comments, to be honest with you, dude. So, but, um, well, uh, well, since uh, he's come back, so apparently um, they've got um, JP Morgan to help with the sale. Wow. No word on if there's any like um, interested buyers or anything. I mean, there's a list. So um, the Saudi. Uh, it, now let me get this right. Is it the Saudi People's Fund? Something like that. It's called. Um, they actually own uh, Newcastle United Football Club. And <laughs> for money, well, there you go. They took over Newcastle. I forgot the exact fee, but. It was tens of millions, if not hundreds. And, like, for example, there's their, like, budget. And they purchased Newcastle for, I forgot how much it was, say 100 million. And that was their budget. And it still went like that. It didn't affect their budget <laughs> at all. Oh, yeah, they're loaded, oh, dude. Thanks, uh, Martin. Uh, the Saudi Public Investment Fund. Okay. Uh, well, they also, you know, push towards, you know, the Saudi shows and w, uh, when WWE goes over. Apparently, they're interested in purchasing WWE. What's the asking price? They haven't said yet. Uh, I don't think I've come across it, but what would you put a price in WWE? Oh. I mean... I assume it, billions. Well, yeah, I mean, Peacock, they gave, was it three or four billion just for the network? Was it really? Yeah. Shit. Whew. Well, what's what are they? What's their profits? I mean, what's doesn't the the business or the company like make a billion dollars a year or some shit? Yeah, and I mean, stock prices just shot up, but between seventeen and twenty percent. With news that there's going to be a sale, and one of the reasons. So, from what I've seen, expect a. If you're going to expect the sale, you'll see it within the next three to six months. Oh, wow. And one of the reasons they're doing it, and this could be an interesting thing, one of the reasons they talk about selling the company. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. I think the TV uh, rights, the TV deals, runs out next summer, 2024. And obviously, the deals they've got now, they've got unbelievable deals. We've said many times, if it wasn't for their TV deals, you know, we've seen what they do on house shows. Not great. Right. Do you think they're trying to sell before it, time comes to renew this TV deal? Because with the ratings, let's be honest, Raw's in the toilet. SmackDown's okay. Raw's in the toilet. With the ratings going down, not performing like they do, these TV companies will probably give them, I don't know, a lower deal next time where it would actually affect their bottom line? Possibly. But like other sports, like baseball, the ratings are so so, but they still got way more money than wrestling gets. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I think. Listen, 
Vince is not stupid, and he's got the smartest people working for him, right? Yeah. Analysts, and they can project where, like, we're heading, to, like I said before, we're heading to one of the worst financial crises in world's history. It's happening now. All right, we're in it, and it's going to get worse. So maybe they want to try to get rid of it before, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, um, but no, it's, um, Definitely interesting, and like Vince apparently said, "Fat, you know, take stepping down was the wrong decision. He received uh, bad advice, and uh, you know, I guess he, he didn't. He, should, he feels like he shouldn't have left. But um, so I've seen apparently um, Stephanie and Triple H they're still in charge of creative. Um, also, the sale does go through. That Nick Khan's gonna get millions from the sale, right?" Let me ask you a question. If he is there like a clause to where he has to stay in charge if they sell it? Like he still has to run it? I think that's why he's back to make sure that clause uh, clause is in there. Oh, okay. I see. Um, but there's well, here's the, the thing, man. If you're gonna buy something for billions and billions of dollars, that's a pretty effed up clause if you're gonna have to like, okay, yeah, you can buy it, but I'm still going to have major say and create and run the whole thing. You know what I mean? It's like, then what are you buying? Yeah. That happened with uh, TNA. Now I forgot who they were selling to. Someone in the chat will probably tell me. Um, so this was, this would have been 2012, possibly 2013. Um, TNA was looking to sell because the hemorrhage and money basically. Yeah. And uh, they had a few interest people that was interested but the, the car is said we want Dixie to make sure Dixie car has, you know, a row in the company. Mm. And that's what effed it up, basically, the sale. And because of that, they ended up kept losing, losing money till the point where they did sell. Company was barely worth anything. <laughs> oh, wasn't that like Jeff Jarrett and Ernie Sadler or Toby Keith or something? Yeah, it might be actually Toby Keith. Yeah, yeah, they wanted to buy it, but uh, I think it was Bob Carter that was Dixie's dad. Said, "Yeah, but you got to keep uh, Dixie on or whatever." And that was like a deal breaker. Like, no, we don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I mean, the other companies that gets rumored about, obviously NBC uh, is one of the main names. Obviously, they've it's NBC that's got Peacock, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what happens if NBC does buy it? Does that mean Fox takes off SmackDown? Uh, possibly. I mean, what's the rivalry between uh, TV stations in America like or Canada? Well, I can't imagine if one station buys it that they're going to let the product yeah. they just bought be aired on another. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you want to get some of these super chats before uh, they get overloaded like last time? Yeah, uh, please overload us for Super Chats. I'm more than happy to do yeah, so. Thank you, everyone, for last Friday. That was amazing. We, yeah, it was uh, actually our record night, actually. So, uh, big thank you, everyone. So, um, I feel like, uh, what do you call it? I'm not a draw. I feel like it's Paul, Jason, and yourself. That's a draw, it's not me. <laughs> no, we're it's a collaborative. Everybody pitches in to make this thing work. And we're just uh, so grateful that we've grown so much. What's the first chat? I think it was um, Fix Stream. I don't have my glasses. Hi, team. I'll be missing this one. I'm at Logan Airport picking up my little sister from Bolivia. Funny since I'll go back in two weeks. Have a good show. Well, thank you, Fix Stream. Sorry, my glasses. I'll here. I'll put on my real glasses. There we go. Thank you for the other night, and uh, we'll see you in, uh, next week or the week after. Hope your your sister enjoys her stay. Bolivia. It's a country I've never been to. I've never been there either. Bolivia, yeah. that is African, isn't it? I don't know. I'm pretty I've sure. Bul- I've been to Bulgaria. How was that? It was nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've heard the cheapest chips in Bulgaria is like a pint where it sells like 30 pence. For alcohol? Yeah. You would know that, wouldn't you? No, if my uncle went over. And uh, this was this was years ago. It might be changing. It might be expensive. It's South but, America, pal. Sorry? Oh, South America. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm sorry. Um, mm. Yeah, he said to me because um, he went there and he went to uh, Czech Republic and they've got like the museums like of torture machines and stuff like that. And he said, went nightclub and he said, yeah, he said the drinks that he said literally like hundred pound you can live like a king. <laughs> he says like yeah. thirty pence for like a pint of lager or something. Yeah, it's very cheap. I went to Bulgaria and Romania. Uh, Cafe de Rene European tour. Beautiful woman. <laughs> I've heard that. Jean Poirier, thank you. Eat any cheese today? I haven't. I'm trying to be good. You, Rene? No, I had cheese yesterday. I went to Subway. Right. Mm. So, yeah, I'm trying to cut down on the cheese now. Uh, 773 is live. Uh, thank you. Uh, best way to start the week is watching Cafe de Rene. Do you guys think a lot of talent will get let go again with Vince coming back? Yes. I would not be surprised. Yeah. There's, there's a um, TV show, and someone posted the meme, and I found it hilarious. Uh, have you seen head of that show uh, for boys? I have not. It, it's like a superhero show, but it makes fun. That it's like a, it's not so much a parody of superheroes, uh, superheroes but it, it kind of is. It's a serious show, but they make fun of, say, you know, how everything is like, oh, superheroes and it's all like capitalism and shit like that. Anyway, there's this one guy, he's called Homelander. He's like, you know, the all-American superhero. But in real life, like, the guy's a proper dick. But he, the facade he puts on. So he gets up the stage and there's another superhero. I've got his name. He's like, he runs quick. And he's getting up and he whispers to him, I can see you got about you fat fuck. Lose some weight now, you disgusting human being. So someone titled it above Vince McMahon when he sees Top Dollar on his first day back. Wow. I found it hilarious. I feel sorry for that guy, man. He must... Oof. Well, they, they, uh, they made a skit of it on SmackDown there. It was rather last week, the week before... Well, the week after the uh, botch. And um, so I found to read really like, the way they do things, it's like, it's too corny. Like, they just told, like, these mundane jokes about him botching. Mm. And it was, like, the reactions was, like, overreactions, like, the way they was laughing and that. I'm like, no one fucking laughs that way in real life. And, like, yeah, reacts to, like, these sort of jokes. Yeah, it's really shitty acting. <laughs> you know? They're trying to make it, like, a Hollywood movie, but it's just so corny, right? No. No. Um, <clears throat> Eamon. Eamon the Seaman Demon, Yes. Eman, so I got I have one of my robes that I used to wear in WWE, the purple one. Uh the wrestling boots that I wore in all Japan, part of the voodoo murderers, and uh, another pair of tights. So what happened was I was over in England. This is about 10 years ago, 11 years ago. I was supposed to stay over for six weeks, but I snapped. I just went crazy, and um, <clears throat> so as I was, I got a room at the Sheridan, I think, and then uh, I was going to fly out. I flew it out early, and as I was putting my, my suitcase, loading it, it actually broke. The, the whole thing right. exploded, so I took the suitcase, and I threw it against the, in the hallway of the hotel <laughs> and just left it there, but apparently someone found it, and uh, Eamon the Seaman Demon, my good friend, uh has the robe and the tights and the boots so i don't want them anymore <clears throat> so we're putting them on is it ebay ebay yes so it's on ebay it's based out of uh the uk so we're gonna put the links in the description um after the after the video so if anybody uh is interested in having a little piece of history those those are up for uh up for sale so yeah. um yeah i'll put them in the, on the community tab as well but like Renee said, basically for the video game players out there as well, the robe, what Renee comes into the ring, the purple one, uh, it's that robe. Yeah, purple yeah. robe. And purple the, the uh, black trunks, I believe. I think it's uh, black trunks, French Fremont has the RD initials on the side, French Fremont yeah. in the back, and the boots were the All Japan Voodoo Murderer boots. So if right. anybody's a fan of Japanese wrestling, you can have a piece of the history with those boots. Cool. Right. Well, before we get back to the Super Chats, another quick update here. So um, SmackDown's ratings. So uh, this past week, uh, the first episode, uh, SmackDown 2023, they got a 2.25 in the ratings. That's down 
372k since last the previous week was seen there. Wow. But that's usually what they average, right? Yes. 2.1, 2.2. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, yeah, that's uh, predictable. I mean, so, you know, they haven't seen him in a while. He was their top draw and top mm. promoted act for decades, over a decade. So, yeah, that's, you know. Did yeah. I tell you what their I first know. rating was on their Fox? Their first rating? Yeah, on Fox. With The Rock? With the Rock? Yeah. I think they peaked at 3.5 million, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. I thought it was a bit higher. I thought it was like a four. Oh, uh, they maybe, but I was I was around. I thought I was around three point five. Might be, yeah. Well, it just tells you like how quickly it dropped, like you know, one point three. If it is three point five, like how much of a drop it is. And um, AEW uh, Dynamite when they first debuted, um, that was like a one point four the first episode, and now they're just averaging eight hundreds, like eight fifties. I would say they're averaging every week. Yeah. Too much so, wrestling. Dude. Too much. Yeah, well, Rampage, their second show, actually got a um, 550K. And that's considered good. For, yeah, to be honest, I was looking, I'm like, I think that was actually good for Rampage. Yeah. Well, about 300. Yeah, yeah, they went down to 300. I think the week that uh, Cena came back, they were only like three or 400,000. So that's pretty bad when a show does two, a wrestling show does 2.6 million. Yeah. And you're leading in, you know, you're following that and you can only get, what that's what one sixth, one seventh of the audience, yeah. And a lot of those guys are ex WWF guys, some like John Mox, who was the next champion on your show. You know what I mean? Mm. So, anyway, let's go back to the super chats. Uh, yep, uh, good question here from Eagles. Uh, Renee, any Gene Kaniski stories? I do not, I wish I did. Uh, I never got to talk to my dad much, but that guy was uh, legit, and yeah, I think he was an NWA champion, one of the very few Canadians to have won it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Garrett William Jones, thank you. Uh, Renee, what's your thoughts on the keto for dropping weight fast? I've hit the wall between weight loss and gains. Oh, keto, yeah. Um, I tried that with the intermittent. I did an intermittent fasting plus keto at once. Wow. That's the leanest. I, yeah, I had like... Uh, veins and stuff coming out of my abs like i was vascular like i'm yeah 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 but that's very hard to maintain but uh intermittent intermittent fasting is good to do uh it's actually has a lot of health benefits you know um i'm doing it now are you yeah it's it takes a lot of discipline makes a lot Uh, of this 12 to 6 i'm doing 12 to 6 okay I was doing like a nine to five, like a job. Like you start right. at 9 a.m., five, yeah. And then at, at night, you, you get hungry, right? I love to eat, you know? I, so the thing uh, is, like, I love to eat, as you can tell. <laughs> right. Yeah. The thing is, like, I did the six meals, six, seven meals a day for so long that my body's so used to it. So for me to do like intermittent fasting, it took a good six to eight weeks to really adjust because I get so hungry, right? That's why black coffee, green tea, uh, is good to like cut cut your hunger and stuff, you know? Another thing is good is uh, apple cider vinegar. Like it's green tea. Thing, it? <laughs> yeah, yeah it. <laughs> it's nasty, but it really good for uh, cutting you up. So like yeah. uh, green tea with like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and some um, um, uh, lemon. You know, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I've been there uh, today. I had um, drinking. Well, to try and finish my jug off, two point two liters of water. Um, like twelve o'clock, I had like a little uh, protein yogurt. Like you can get them in pouches. I had one of them at twelve, one of them at three. Then six o'clock, I got home. My wife made us like a uh, roast chicken uh, dinner. So I just had that with some vegetables. So. Uh, it's the first couple of days. Once you get past the first few days, I'm okay. But it's the first few days, so uh, I mm-hmm. haven't weighed myself, so I'm gonna have to weigh myself first thing in the morning. I bought some pizza today, so I'm gonna make that after this. <laughs> oh, right. <nice. laughs> oh, here's okay. a question for you. Here's Thanks a question, Renee. Pineapple, uh, pineapple on a pizza. Does it belong? 
Different strokes for different folks, my friend. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, well, though, bagel topper schmear. Schmear. Love the thumbnail. Um, Renee, great to see you, senor. You too, King James. I'm just glad this man thing didn't turn into a whole Me Too accusation thing. You see it so much in the media when it's not warranted. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, man. He, uh, when you got that much money and you donate so much money to like political organizations and stuff, and yeah, trust me. Vince has got a lot more power than just in the entertainment business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Royal Coach out. Could Finns take WWE private like Twitter on Elon? I've heard that. I've he heard, sure especially could. with the Taldis. He sure could. And there's be a lot of benefits to it, too. Like, taking it public made him a billionaire. Now taking it back private, all this other shit that you hear, like all these accusations, that's private. So you wouldn't be hearing that stuff, right? Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just, um, I swear there. Sorry, my um, thing was on. Um, yeah, someone's just asked actually uh, to react to the um, SmackDown versus Raw games, uh, like your thing. I actually spoke to Jonah about it earlier today. Um, I'm going to get the clips ready and Jonah's going to try and work out how to do the audio and we're going to get you to react to your voice acting in SmackDown 3 Raw. We're going to try and do that next week, everyone. Yeah, that'd be fun. It's just mainly you interacting with Tori Wilson, so it's not a bad thing. I wish it was real life. You say something like, <laughs> along the lines, how can I concentrate on your match, on my match, when you're shaking your ass at ringside? <laughs> It's on there, me saying that? Yes. It's a long really? time. Yeah, take, uh, take note for you. Shit. I remember, yeah, we. it took like three hours to read all the dialogue, dialogue that they gave me. Uh, like we had recorded my voice for the video game or whatever. It was like three hours. I got there like at like two or three in the afternoon, and I left there just in time to get to the house show that night. Right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, We'll get back to Super Chats in a minute. I just want to go on our next headline. So, everyone, please uh, send your questions in. Uh, interesting one here, uh, Renee. Um, so, Dave Meltzer and Conan, uh, not so much a back and forth, but Dave Meltzer said basically about Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay's just had his, another six star match with Kenny Omega at Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, I haven't watched the match yet. I've seen some highlights. Yeah, it's a good match, but you know, I've been the Will Ospreay match and all the same to me, but great talent. Anyway, um, basically, Dave Meltzer said at 29 years old, Ospreay has surpassed Eddie Guerrero for charisma, in ring work, and promos. Uh, Conan responded, he said, I would agree in promos and charisma, but not in ring work. Um, Disco Inferno disagreed. He said that Guerrero had more charisma at 29 than what Will, uh, Will Ospreay did. I never and, heard a uh, Will Ospreay promo. It's basically a lot of um, effing and jeffing, we call it. Like They do the post-press conference, don't they, in New Japan? Yeah. And this is the thing, and don't get me wrong, we all swear, but I find it very lazy if that's their retort to try and make the promos good. It's like, F this, F that, I'm the effing king, F this, F, thank you for believing me, F this, F this match, and blah, blah, blah. That's essentially <laughs> the promos from, like, you know, wrestlers these days with uh, press, press conferences. Um, but this gun fell disagreed. He said that Eddie had more charisma, but then Conan responded by saying, bro, I was there every effing minute. I'm saying effing everyone because the other lords at YouTube says try to demonetize us. Yeah, uh, bro. I was there every effing minute. He had very little charisma then. He got his charisma when he did that promo in WCW, and then he did that. Who's your puppy in uh, WWE in two thousand and five? Well, I've never been in the ring with Osprey, but I have been in the ring with Eddie. He was one of the smoothest guys. I would agree. First of all, Dave Meltzer is just a fan. That's all he is. Yeah, and 
I could would make an assumption or make a determination not by watching him, but actually being in the ring with the guy. I'd be in the ring with Eddie. If I was ever in the ring with Osprey, I would let you know. Yeah. 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 Well, um, like I said, they had a good match, Osprey, and um, and uh, Omega defeated him for the IWGP uh, US title. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and I think, if I'm wrong, I think it's this weekend, actually. It's Wrestle Kingdom Night 2, which is weird because it's like a week later. It's Fire Noah versus, it's Noah versus uh, New Japan. And yeah. There's only one foreigner on the whole card, El Fantasmo. He's from BC, Canada. Right, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't wish I was there. Yeah. It's, yeah. But, but anyway, it is what it is. But uh, let's keep going with these super chats, man. Yep. Uh, Dave Burns, thanks, James and Renee, for pointing out a great show. Thank you, Thank Dave. Thank you, Dave Burns. Appreciate you. Uh, here we go. Dick Hammerbush, that's the name. Two questions. First, you, James. Do you think the McMahon comes out on Raw tonight? And Renee, what was your biggest ever WWE PPV uh, check uh, and merchandise? Uh, I don't think Finns comes back tonight. I still think he won't appear on TV for quite a while, but I might be wrong, but I don't think you'll see him on TV soon. I think he's concentrating on behind the scenes. Renee? Biggest ever pay-per-view check was me and Cena from Judgment Day in LA. Uh, merchandise check was that SmackDown versus Raw video game. All right. Yeah. Cool. What's well, your second biggest pay-per-view? Can't remember. Mania? No, that was my worst pay per view. Really? Yeah. I'm just trying probably, to think. Probably SummerSlam or. Was you on some? Yeah, I mean, Sly versus Dudley Boys tables match, SummerSlam. Oh, yeah, you beat him. Yeah. 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 I beat Bubba, blubber. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, he's, uh, he's challenging for the Impact Wrestling uh, World Title at Hard to Boy, go. oh boy, I can't wait. Yeah. I posted on the uh, Impact Instagram feed. As I just wrote, it's great to see Alex Jones in professional wrestling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, Articulate at 77. Thank you. I think you're a new fan, so thank you for joining us. Uh, a lot of Canadians tonight, Renee. Um, love the show, guys. Renee, what's your favorite action figure of yourself? Mine is the youth gen figure, French flag tights and knee pads. Mm. Yeah, I like that one too. I, I, I caught on real quick. Every time I changed my gear, they'd make a new action figure. That's why I got like nine or ten of them. Yeah. I like the French flag, yeah. I like French flag. I think he got heat for that. You know, um, Sack Ryder? What about him? Because uh, he's normally uh, brown-headed, and he dyed his hair blonde. And I think he got heat for it. I might be wrong, because they were bringing out a figure, and he dyed his hair blonde. And I think they was upset with him because it was like, we've only just brought a figure out. Yeah. That's why um, you got to clear like tattoos. There was a big no-no because they make all these action figures, video games, promotional material. So they want you to look exactly like you look on the promotional material and, and merchandising, right? So that's why they didn't. Uh, so you couldn't like dye your hair or make any drastic changes to your appearance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nate, the big beefy man. Nate. Hey, and Renee, uh, question for Renee: uh, Craziest backstage fight or almost backstage fight you ever saw in any of the promotions you worked for? When Bob Holly kicked my fucking head in. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, uh, I didn't see the uh, Eddie and Kurt fight. I didn't see Jericho and Goldberg fight. Uh, I almost saw a big, big show in uh, in Chavo, which. Paul was in the middle of, and he can't remember, but I was there. I seen it. But uh, I think anybody would agree, like, during my era, the the most brutal fight was when me and Bob, where he sucker punched me in the ring as I'm feeding him him my body and then bashing me in the back of the head with a steel chair when I didn't know it was coming and kicking me multiple times, which left a huge dent in my head and then exploded on a plane, which I almost died. So there you go, Nate. Next question. 
I was thinking the other day, you know, uh, staying on Bob Ollie. I know we don't really talk about him too much, but it's weird, isn't it? He was in WWE for 15 years, give or take. I think 15 years. Might have been 20. It was like 93 he came in, and like he was there to at least 2008. Might be over 15 years. As soon as they fired him, have you ever heard WWE mention? Well, I know you don't watch it, but has anyone heard WWE mention Adko Holly at all? I think Bradshaw did. Yeah. On commentary. Yeah. Oh, Alabama Slam, my hardcore yeah. Holly. Yeah. Besides that, like nothing. And like, this is a guy that was in the company for over 15 years. And like, there's, no- <laughs> there's nothing said about him at all. Very few people liked him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eagles, thank you again. Uh, what's the biggest uh, CDR trope now? Jonah, figure out the audio or Paul being late? Paul being late. <laughs> it's always Paul being late. It's Paul being late. Paul. Yes, and ladies and gentlemen, we will bring back the entire crew very shortly because the uh, I think everybody enjoyed it. And uh, I enjoyed it. I, I had a blast, man. I don't think I laughed that hard in years. So. I don't want to overdo it, though. I don't want it to become stale, so we bring it out every now and then. And uh, over over 270 people have joined us tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, two more pockets, 34. Hey, Renee, thoughts on Jake Lee joining Pro Wrestling Nowhere? He seems like a huge signing for them. Um, Maybe if you're really into it. I don't... i seen they got this young boy from Scotland called Jack Morris. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he is jacked. I don't know. He's put on a lot of size since he got there, and he's ripped. He looks like a miniature Drew McIntyre, but more ripped. So I think they got big plans for him. So look out for that Jack Morris guy. All right. Um, Gunner Dragon, new video series idea. Let's play SmackDown Fever 2006 mode with Rene Dupree. Renee is one of the characters who can hit Teddy Long with a car. <laughs> no, I couldn't, I couldn't catch him because he's the cardio king, remember? He mm. spread out of there quick. I think I've had, player, player. What? I think I've had every... Yeah, I think I've had every WWE game <laughs> ever. Really? Except 2K20, because that was an abortion of a game. I didn't Did you have Royal Rumble 93 for Super Nintendo? Yeah. That was my favorite, because that's the only one I ever played. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I love the um, WrestleMania the Arcade game as well. They brought out. It was like it was like uh, sprites of like the actual wrestlers, but it played like Mortal Kombat. It was like Undertaker's tombstone, he would literally pull a literal tombstone out of nowhere and smash you over the head with it. Uh, and, I, remember, uh, I remember playing the ping, uh, ping pong WWF game at the arcade here when I was a kid. Right. Yeah. So, Not ping pong, but uh, is that what it's uh, called? No, sorry, right. pinball. Pinball, pinball, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Ping pong. Um, pinball. Let's see, life of the go. Yeah, I spot this actually. Thoughts on WWE posting the Paul London Royal Rumble elimination today? Wow. Well, it is one of the greatest eliminations ever. ever. I, I, I put it second just behind Maven eliminating Taker. That was a nice drop kick Maven threw. Yeah. And it was just a real shock. Right. Which, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Maven Huffman will be making his appear, uh, reappearance. Very shortly on the cafe. So, he is. Uh, he's coming back real soon. We're just uh, final. I tell you, there is a one that I've, I've had. I put dates out, and in the meantime, waiting for people to confirm. Other people's confirmed in the meantime, and yet we're pretty. Yeah, we're booked out for the rest of the month now, and the beginning halfway of February. Halfway until yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. I appreciate all the wrestlers taking time to do this, man. Uh, the fans appreciate it too, because. It's always it's always good to interact and you know find out what the guys are up to and just relive old stories. I think I think everybody enjoys it. I love it. Yeah. And this Thursday we got uh, Rodney Mack. Is that right? That's right, my boy Red Dog Rodney Mack. 
he's coming on Friday. And, um, yeah, I told him if he had any um, – because he has a really badass wrestling school in San Antonio, the Dog Power yeah. Dojo, and I really want to promote that for him. So, I like – I messaged him, but maybe I should message him. I messaged Jazz. You know how it is. Women, you know, they control everything. Like, oh, they're the brains, yep. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they're the boss. So I'll message Jazz, see if they have like a like a YouTube video or something where he can help promote his uh, his uh, dojo, his mm-hmm. uh, training, training school. If you're in the San Antonio uh, area, definitely check out Ronnie and Jazz. They're the some of the best for fundamentals and everything. Okay, next question. Yeah, well, we're caught up on super chat, so I'll get yeah, to our, uh, yeah, I'll get to our next topic. But people, if you want to ask Renee and myself questions, please do so. Um, good news for WWE. They've uh, upcoming WrestleMania. It's broke all rec- all time records for the gate. Already, already. Um, the previous record was WrestleMania thirty two, and that drew seventeen point three million. That was in 2016, so um, yeah, and still nearly three months to the, to the show, and no matches has been announced. But yeah, we've already broke it. Damn. Well, this is the first year with fans back, right? No, it's been a couple of years now they've had fans, oh. okay. but it, it's in Hollywood. Hollywood. And that, uh, I was I was there for Hollywood. That's where I met. The, remember the Jibby Yang story with the porn star in the room. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's when we were in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's in the Sophie Sophie Center, but I, f- I think one of the reasons why it's sold out straight away the big room, the big rumor for the main event is two. It's rather going to be Roman v Cody Rhodes, or it's going to be Roman v The Rock. Rock, trust me, that's what they want. It depends on Rock's schedule, though. Listen, if there's going to be a place sold out, it's because The Rock is rumored to be there, right? Yeah. Yeah. But there's rumors, because um, there's rumors Stone Cold might pop up again, because uh, he's gotten so he's still in great shape. Yeah. And he's been training lately. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll um, have to see. Um, so another thing we'll talk about, Renee, um, Dana White. I don't think we mentioned it the other day. If we did, I forgot we, it was brief. So New Year's Eve, yeah, the, a video went viral on TMZ where his wife, uh, I think she's been married to him for 27 years, 23 years, a long time either way. Wow. And the mother, mother of his three kids, she slapped him over an argument and then he basically <laughs> slapped her. And, yeah, uh, one too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thoughts on that? <laughs> well, 27 years, you're basically best friends, and it's not really, you know what I mean? Mm. Saying, who knows? There's relationships out there where, you know what I mean? I mean, who the thing is, he is in a, to do that out in public, and especially when you're in his position, when the cameras are on you at all times, and you know what I mean? The world we live in today, and. I don't think he hit. I saw the video. It's not like he hit her hard enough to draw blood or anything, or knock her out, or even bruise her. But it's still putting your hands on the woman, though, isn't it's it? Still putting your hands on a woman, and I don't know. Um, has there been any word on any? Uh... Um, n- well, a few of the UFC fighters, a couple of them's not happy about it. Uh, Dustin Poirier said, "You know, I've been raised up never to put your hands on a woman." A couple of us not happy about it. Um, one of the things that's come out about it, though, so uh, Dana White's got a new promotion coming out. Now, have you seen them videos online, like when they're slapping each other, ironically enough? Huh. When oh, the slap fight? Yeah, it's normally in, like, Russia and, you know, Eastern European countries, basically. Mm-hmm. Well, Dana White's got a new TV show coming out, company, uh, Power Slap League. It was meant to debut on the 11th of this month. And because of that, TBS has uh, delayed the launch of it. Wow. But that's like so ironic. <laughs> he's right. like, he's right. and the right. slap, slap fight TV show has been not cancelled yet, but delayed. <laughs> delayed, yeah. All right, gotta be careful, man. Just day and age, gotta be careful. 
cool. And uh, I think we've got a couple of super chats just popped in. Uh, Keith Rock, thank you. Uh, where are you in the building the night Bubba Ray had fat, gruesome, torn fat injury in catering? What? Uh, I don't remember. A torn fat. Uh, if you can elaborate on that, man, I don't. I don't remember. Can you tell you fat? Tore his fat. No, probably tore his stomach from you. I was on the my first European trip. Right, we're over to the UK. And we had our own chartered flight, and they had food carts on both ends of the of the plane. Right, and Bubba. Well, everybody else was sleeping, trying to get, to, you know, because it was after Raw. You, know, you had to travel right after Raw. It was a long day, and a lot of guys were sleeping. But I, I kind of sleep on planes, even though you're, like, in these – literally like a lazy boy on this chartered flight, right? But, so he would go to one end, eat all the food. Then he'd go up to the other end, eat all the food. Then he'd wait till they they refill the, the, the food chart. And then he'd go and eat more. And then I thought it was funny. <laughs> Uh, another one from Waldo, thank you. Waldo! Uh, Renee, would you be comfortable sharing your first reality check or don't meet your hero story from when you were standing out just as a kid? Probably Triple H. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Thought he was a dick. That's probably what, the only one I'm just meaning him. What was it? Was it just the way he was around you, or did he say something in particular that like pissed you off? Yeah, just, just an asshole. Right. Yeah. But there's times, like a very few times, but a few times, and then I noticed whenever he'd be complimentary of me, it meant so much. Because he was always just like a snob fucking make these offhanded comments, right? Hmm. Then when he actually complimented me, I felt like, wow, it's so cool. And he, you know, but overall, he was a dick. Anyway, keep going. Good. Yeah, Carl. Hey, UK guy. Greetings from England. Predictions for the Royal Rumble winners. Bushwalker Luke. Hey. <laughs> um, I think. Cody Rhodes, unless The Rock comes back. But uh, I think it'll be Cody Rhodes, women's, uh, probably Rhea Ripley, if I had to take a guess. Uh, she's on a bit of a hot streak at the minute. So, um, yeah, I would say them two is uh, my predictions. Uh, Renee, you don't really watch WWE. Well, you say you do. <laughs> but... I don't. Uh, didn't they put the belt on Flair's kid like her first day back? Yeah. Which, let me say another thing about that. Ronda Rousey, UFC champion, black belt in judo. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Bronze. Oh, sorry. I'm thinking Olympics. No, she's a black belt at judo. Yeah. Right. Amongst other, probably other mar uh, martial arts as well. You know. Shard Flair, who, what sport did she ever play? Volleyball? Uh, probably on netball or something. Pins her for three seconds because that's a one, two, three, three seconds with a fucking schoolboy. Mm. You wonder why people just think wrestling's bullshit. Come on, that's... she does like really good bridge, right? You yeah, a corner roll into a bridge because she can, she's very flexible. Yeah, ever ha hold. Ronda's arms when she's down have a struggle if you're going to do a fucking schoolboy off a fucking mm. UFC champion? Come on, man. Next question. That's three <sighs> way the WWE match ends by a finisher, a schoolboy, or a small package. Yeah. Then three endings every time. Uh, League Balik. Well, five, five fingers. Five fingers to the face. Well, five, smack. I <laughs> love that. Do you remember that? Charlie Murphy stories, Dave Chappelle. Oh, hell yeah. It's looking awesome. Rick James. Charlie Murphy. <laughs> Unity. <laughs> I don't know which one's my favorite. The Rick James stories are the one he talks about, uh, Prince. When, him, oh, when playing when... basketball with his like, <laughs> yeah. platform shoes. 
And then you go making pancakes afterwards. <laughs> yeah. We should just sit down with Dave Chappelle. We should with Paul. Yeah. And hey, the white supremacist is the best. One. Is it Clayton Vicks? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Will you tell him he's black? He probably just killed himself. He's so committed to the call. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> the jump. Have you ever wrestled in Mississippi? I sure have. Jackson, Mississippi. Actually, I like Mississippi. It's like, I think it's one of the poorest states in America, though. Right. But uh, I like, uh, I like uh, New Orleans as well because a lot of French Cajun people there. Yeah. Louisiana. La Louisiana. Yeah. That reminds me, I need to bring uh, Lash back. Yeah, because I like I really like to sit and talk with him. See how good his French is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the champ, thank you for joining us, champ. Uh, is the story from the evolution documentary true? During a tag match at a house show, Batista and Randy faced the Dudleys and both got injured and Bubba. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they put that in the. Do- I didn't watch the documentary, but yeah, that's quite that a good is- documentary. But they buried Jindrak. Yeah, that's not cool. Why yeah. do that? Especially when Jindrak got himself over in Mexico like a motherfucker, dude. Jindrak yeah. was on it. Yeah, but... Well, uh, creative editing. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I hear they do that. Yeah, come in for an interview, and then you'll talk for three hours, and they'll take, like, three minutes, and they'll edit it out to make you look like an asshole, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the way they do shit. But, but uh Yeah. But uh, Randy, I think, broke his foot or ankle or he got really screwed up. And then Batista probably tore something like he always does. And then uh, Bubba hurt his back or something. And then as they're being loaded in, Randy's being loaded into the ambulance. Bubba comes and starts yelling at him, saying that he hurt him. Oh, that Randy hurt Bubba. Yeah. While he's been... Right, right. He's being like in, in like serious pain with like a broken foot or ankle or whatever the hell happened to him. Like that just shows Bubba's just such a prick, dude. Anyway, next question. Before we get the next one, so obviously Bubba, you can you can definitely say he was pissed off because he could see. Well, I know Batista's not young, but new to the business. You see Batista new to the business. You see Randy, who you know WWE's got big plans for. Safe to say, Bubba seeing that um, got really, really jealous and was like, right, I'm just going to try and F their careers up before they get going. Oh, yeah. Yeah, folks, there's a lot of that. I don't know if it's still like that, but at one point in time, there was a lot of that. Oh, yeah. Because Randy and Batista uh, very, very quickly overtook the Dudleys. I mean, look at Orton's career now. Uh, What would... I would love to know, like, I can imagine, like, since then, Bubba, like, a lot of kiss ass, and, like, next time you met Orton. Yeah. I remember Randy, because me and Randy were probably closer than most, I guess, at one point in time, and he would always tell me how much he, Vince hates Bubba. Yeah. He would give me, like, the end, because, I mean, Randy was a, he was on top from the get-go and he would always let you know let me in on like inside stuff from the top and stuff and yeah i knew a lot of like who hunter really liked and disliked and but hunter really you could price you could see through it he didn't make any if he didn't like you you knew it right I can't imagine triple h was a fan of uh bubba no Nobody was. Like anyone. <laughs> Nobody it's, was. It's, it's amazing that how long of a career he's had because I don't think I've heard anyone, and I've listened to a lot of shoot interviews. I've interviewed loads of wrestlers, not just on here, but on my old show. I don't think there's a one wrestler who's got a good thing to say about Bubba Ray Dudley. Muda fucking hates him too. I can imagine. Yeah. Right. Uh, 773 is life. Uh, can we get Kenny Bowling on the two year episode of Cafe Day, Renee? We sure can. Hey, 773, are you secretly bowling? Are you bowling actually in disguise? Two years, do you reckon we'll make it the two years, Renee? Who bowling? I don't know if you'll make it to two months, you might die soon. Uh, <laughs> oh, us, 
Uh, if the if the fans keep it up and they want to see us, man, help. Uh, yeah, I think we can make it. We're nearly touching three hundred people, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Please hit the. I know it's annoying if I say hit the like button, but it really does help us. Like I didn't realize how much it helps the channel, like hitting the like button, but it really does. Um, so please do so. Uh, Mr. Roost Network, thank you for joining us again, pal. Charlotte Flair winning the SmackDown uh, Women's Championship was an obvious Vince McMahon call from either home or backstage. I, no, I don't agree. No, she's got my, Michael, hey, Dave, Dave, what do you think, Vince? Uh, Hunter, they're all behind her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, especially, um, like, I know Triple H is a Ric Flair mark. It's no secret. Was Michael yeah. Hayes close to Flair? I know he was in the NWA and stuff, but was we'll they close from what you saw while you was in WWE? Yeah. No, everybody had a respect for Flair, right? You know, but I just saw, I thought it was sad seeing him there at point in time. Like, like, as a fan, you see how over he is, right? Woo! And, you know, everybody loved But, like, his financial woes and stuff, like, I really got to see it backstage when he's, like, calling up the on overseas tour and calling up the the accountant, like, begging for money and shit. Mm. It's like, here's the thing, man. Like, money is an addiction, and a lifestyle can be an addiction. Fame is an addiction, right? So it's kind of hard to change your lifestyle when you're so used to doing it for so many years, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, well, we've got a few more super chats, but I just want to talk about the uh, next topic. So please send in your questions, everyone. Um, so Great Muta, um, his final match has been announced. So it's a six-man tag. Uh, Muta is teaming up with Sting and Darby Allen, and they'll be taking on Hakushi, Akira, and Marafuji. Oh, Akira. Wow. I don't think a lot of fans know who he is, but he's a former New Japan guy. Hakushi, damn. I know, that was the one I popped when I saw it. I was like, oh, Hakushi. Yeah, he still keeps himself in really good shape, too. And Mara Fuji. Darby Allen. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was uh, the weird one. See, Sting, I get. Yeah. Darby Allen. I know Darby Allen's tagging with Sting, but I'm like, Wow, I'm like, you, you're going to be in Muta's last match? I'm like, I mean, fair play to you. But yeah, it's just weird seeing him in that match. It's like, which one of these is not like the other? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I don't know. Do they have a deal with um, AEW? AEW? Is there more AEW guys on the show? Or uh, I'm not, well, I'm not sure because th that's a Pro Wrestling Noah event. Yeah. Um, Darby's at the there. Dome. They're at the Dome, too. At the other dome, yeah. Um, so yeah, unless they're trying to build a relationship, and uh, well, I think we reported it that there was going to be something, but I haven't heard much about it since. Um, well, speaking of which, um, Muta Fi uh, Shinsuke Budokan Hall was eight and a half thousand people attended, nine and a half, nine and a half. Yeah, that, that was like a record for Budokan, is it? That was the best house they drawn. In the last like 10 15 years apparently wow yeah when mizawa was still alive um they were arguably like one of the top promotions right but then when he mm -hmm. passed away and stuff kind of really hurt business and when uh um uh, uh kobashi kobashi retired too it kind of hurt business a little bit but now they're back on the upswing new sponsorships and stuff and yeah that obviously that's the biggest crowd they've had for a while. Do you, do you think that's more for Mute on his last tour, or do you reckon that's because of Shinsuke coming in, or a bit of both? Shinsuke, yeah, the actual match too. Like people want because I don't think they've ever seen Shinsuke and Muda. Uh, I right. can't say I don't think so. Right, so that that's what drew the house, right? So yeah, so. Um, Cool. Shinsuke, is he someone you would love to work with one day, if given the opportunity? Sure, if I get if the payday is good. I'm at the point now where it's dude, it's more about money than ever. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 
Uh, next bowling episode streamed uh, 16 US press debates. <laughs> He's big in politics, Kenny, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. I see him tweet about it every day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not, I don't really care about politics and stuff. I really don't. Well, I'd say I pay attention a lot more now than I did like last couple of years, but I try not to talk about too much because you can't talk about politics without pissing someone off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's best not to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, Grove Meister B, thank you for joining us. Uh, have you some, um, have you some crazy fan interference stories? Thanks. Does he mean like a fan hitting the ring? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Just that one time it was Eddie versus Van Damme in the ladder match and that stupid idiot. Oh, yeah. Ready, yeah. The ring, he tried to push the uh, push the ladder. Like, man. Um, did any fan ever try to... One time when I was like 14 or 15, oh, maybe 16, I was here locally and uh, a fan hit the ring and I was about to like push him. But then I realized it was a special needs kid who got really excited and wanted to be a part. Yeah. So it's like, oh, plus I'm the baby face. I wouldn't be a baby face very, very, very much longer. Territory tech, of yeah. I take a special <laughs> needs kid, right? Yeah. Um, I, I actually saw a clip, funny enough. Um, there's the AEW wrestler, um, Daniel Garcia. Oh, yes. Yeah. I just seen that before coming on here. What a mark. What a mark. <laughs> you, sir, are a mark. You're a heel. I compare yeah. that. Do you remember when uh, Sam, uh, Generico, Sami Zayn, got that fan kicked out for calling him the F word? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, you are a heel. They're paying money. It's a front row at a WWE show. I'm sure that cost them probably close to two bills. Mm. If you're a good worker... You can take the microphone, completely eviscerate this guy in a professional setting, get, you know, embarrass him, but keep it, keeping your heat if you knew what you're doing. But no, he decides to get the guy kicked out. Like, what? Come on, man. And the guy kicks kicks the fan for giving him the finger. You're a heel. Yeah. Like, whoa. I saw, I saw this clip in the, I think there was someone on Twitter saying, this is what happens when the marks are in the ring as opposed to being in the crowd. And then he was, That's right. That's, like, that's what I saw. Couldn't have said it better myself. Like, you're a moron. Butch Mantel said, I, I, I used to love wrestling when the Max was on the other side of the barricade. <laughs> yeah, I love it when, yeah, not booking the show, too, at some points. <laughs> well, th well, this makes laugh. Like, uh, you've seen clips of, say, Shawn Michaels in 97, especially in Canada. Right. <laughs> the heat he used to get, <laughs> like... People throwing beer over him and yeah, all sorts, Jesus. like things. And oh. Freebirds. I mean, I know you're not the biggest Michael Hayes fan, but Freebirds. You know, in the eighties, the, the the hatred they would get when they was wrestling the Freebird. Uh, so, um, this generation is just. I mean, like uh, I would the, uh, the f word agate chance. I would. That was ECW. I. I the house shows, man. I remember going out against Al Snow, and that's there'd be three thousand people there chanting at me. I was like, "Yeah," and I play it up. You I know what watching, I mean? I was watching I mean, Rumble. 90. I was huh? watching Rumble ninety, and uh, Lanny he was managing the um, Rougeos, and I'm watching it, and the fans are chanting that to you know genius Lanny. Yeah, but he played so, it off. Well, yeah. Daniel Garcia, whatever his name is, um, he is also the same person that said when he found out he got a five-star rating off Dave Meltzer, he jumped out of off his sofa. Yeah. I'll leave it there. I remember you asked me, a fan asked me that question, would you work for AEW? Yeah. No. No. no I, I have enough money and being around a locker room filled with marks. Is not is not on my agenda. Sorry. No. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, the champ. Favorite Chappelle segment: Tyrone Begums. Shit. 
Did he like win the lottery and buy a big crack rock for him and his girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, I don't know that one. <laughs> no, no, he won Fear Factor. Remember that he won Fear Factor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. I haven't watched it for a while. You know, I need to rewatch it. Oh, it's, he's he's the best. That, there's another guy, man. Right, that corporate America want to buy him out for the Chappelle Show, offer him fifty million or whatever. Mm. No, I don't have to do that. And look, he's an independent. He can go to any major arena and sell it out. He can call his own shots. How yeah. great is that? Right? It's great. Uh, Christopher Dale, is Mara Fuji as chill as he seems on social media? I don't follow him on social media, so I, don't, I couldn't tell you, but he's a very chill guy. Mm. He's uh, he's like the vice president of Noah, too, right? The office. Is he? Yeah. Right. I bet he must he has he been there for a while then? Been where for a while? In the vice president spot or with no, the Noah. That's where he started. Oh, so he's been there his whole career basically. Yeah. See, like in Japanese companies, not just in wrestling, like if you're with one company, you literally stay with that same company for the rest of your life. Right? Unless they go out of business or like there's their core group, like uh, for example, um, Tanahashi. He started in the in Taro Yano and like Liger, and they all stay in their New Japan for life. Like you're with that company, you stay there, you know. But like you have like Sonata, <clears throat> who trained under the great Muda, right? Muda was you know a New Japan guy, but then he, when uh, Mrs. Baba left or Giant Baba passed away, and Mrs. Baba. He took over New Japan, right? He was the owner, right? And then he had his own, he had his kids that he trained, right? Like the Sonatas and Kais and Soyas. And, but they're going to be taken care of for life just because of who brought them in. You understand? Yeah. 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 Uh, Justin Morrison, thank you for joining us. Uh, did you ever get along with HBK or was he at AHO? Got along with him. What was he? What was he like with Triple H, and what was he like not with Triple H? They were like little kids together, right? Like little junior high kids together. Yeah, you tell they were buddies, man. But it's so funny. It's almost like when they had to put each other over or take their finish, they'd purposely fuck it up. You ever yeah. see Shawn Michaels trying to take a pedigree? You know, I'm trying to think now. <laughs> to be honest, go and look. Uh, there was one time it's like they teased the DX reunion or it was after they had the DX reunion and like turned on each other or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunter turned on Sean and then he That's Sean right. tried to take down and he like botched his fucking pedigree. Yeah. So you can't be Sean Michaels, be that athletic and not be able to take a pedigree. That's like, you almost yeah. like he purposely, yeah, fucked it up. Yeah, yeah. I've just uh, before we went on, you probably heard in the background when we, before we went live. Um, I watched uh, Backlash 2004, the main event. Um, Benoit, Triple H, and uh, Michaels for the world title. Yeah, it's in um, Edmonton. Benoit, right? when, uh, yeah, and the reaction he gets when he comes out to the ring, and it's sad to watch because there's Nancy and Daniel, and there's his other kid as well, and. You know, the surviving one, and I'm pretty sure his father's there as well. But it's basically just I've never heard a reaction like that. Um, you know, you only hear them sort of reaction so many times, and it's it's sad because I, I mean, I can imagine you love Benoit growing up Canadian, but Benoit was one of my favorites, honestly, when he won the Rumble, especially entering number one. Like, I'm at peak mark up them here, and I'm like, oh, I can't believe he won it. and it's it's sad. It's hard to watch these matches, and I'm watching the match. The fans would turn on Shawn Michaels. You screwed, Brett. Then Earl Hebner comes out. And, uh, Shawn Michaels has got Ben Wan the sharpshooter. Hebner's teasing, ringing the bell, and then like the end of the match, Ben Wan makes Michaels tap out with the uh, sharpshooter. And it's um, and honestly, he was the best wrestler in the world at that time. Him, well, him and Eddie anyway. I, I, it, there's always that debate who's the best wrestler, Benoit, Eddie, or Jericho. Not Jericho. It's not Jericho. Cat Angle. And 
honestly, it's a shame what what's happened with Benoit because he should be going down as the greatest wrestler of all time or well, up there. But obviously, for obvious reasons, what's happened, it's uh, you can only just you, you just wish things ended differently than what it did. Can't change it, right? No. Gotta keep on keeping on, man. Um, the champ, uh, w- yeah, uh, WWE posted <laughs> the elimination after he said one million. People took that serious, by the way. They did? When Paul said, you know, I want a million dollars handcuffed <laughs> to me. <laughs> it uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if they wanted Paul back, they'd have to pay him a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, but people online, who does he think he is? I'm like, I'm like, like sorry, but we do it a lot in, in, in the UK. I don't know if he's doing much in Canada and America. There's a thing called sarcasm. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it doesn't seem a lot of people pick up on it, especially on Twitter. Oh, that's why, yeah, I'm no longer on uh, Twitter. I used to have real Rene Dupree. It's no yeah. longer there. Too much hatred. So if you want to get in contact with me, you got to go to the cafe socials. and Which is me. <laughs> which is James. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's try to catch up here. Yeah, I think we're uh, a bit caught up on Super Chats, but... Um, okay. Yeah, and I think that's the uh, wrestling headlines. But um, but yeah, um, no, the other night was quite good. It was very enjoyable. Uh, we led into Smack. That's why SmackDown was lower in the ratings. Everyone was watching us. Yeah. <laughs> Not no, but I think it, 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 yeah, I think it's a good call. Like we're doing this before Raw because a lot of fans that do watch WWE, like you know what I mean. Maybe they want to tune in here before uh, before they watch Raw and stuff, and then again on Fridays. So yeah, this past Friday was was a success. So we're gonna keep on doing it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, and um, we're always thinking of ideas for the show. Like uh, thing, the thing is now because uh, we've got live streams on a Monday and a Friday. It's like, oh, should we do something on the Wednesday now? <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Really? Let the chat know. The chat. Uh, would you guys like to see a third show a week? I don't want to do too much because then, you know, I remember, I think we did it a couple of weeks where we did like three, three live streams in a row. And it was like, Oh, it's a little too much. Well, five interviews in a row, wasn't it? Fuck. Yeah. Oh, look who it is. It's Rex. Rex. Uh, up. Hey Rex. Uh, oh, Rex. Um, I think I got your, uh, voice now. So, um, I'll um I'll try and get it ready for uh, next week's show, but I think I did actually. It was in the spam folder on the Cafe de Rene email address for some reason, because uh, I went I went through the spam folder the other day, and obviously you get them spam, you get that spam, you know, you even in- inherited three hundred million from Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. um, but I was looking at, and there was like you know the podcast request I told you about, yeah, the interview. That was in the spam folder for some reason. And Rex's email was in the spam folder. So I did find it, Rex. We'll try and get, it, get you on next week anyway. Uh, you're recording. Uh, yes. But yeah, um, Chris Benoit went drunk. What was the most uh, disturbing thing he said that was known but hushed? Um, I only saw him drunk once. And it's not what he said. It's just the look he gave me. It was just his eyes and just the rage, you know. He had a beer and... It was, uh, we were in England. It was the night before SmackDown taping. And uh, I went down to the to the bar to get myself some, like a bottle of water or whatever. And, you know, I tapped him on the show and said, hey, what's up, Chris? And then just, just the evil in his eyes, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think I heard Nova, uh, Simon Dean. He said when he was on the roster too, he'd be around Chris when he was drunk and he just turn into his you know how some people are mean drunks yeah yeah he was one of them dude and he, he's to the point where he blacks out like he drank too much he'd black out and wouldn't remember what he's doing right so that's scary i've been there too and that's why i keep my drinking into a very controlled contrived environment try not to do it i'll do it when i'm home or in my hotel room by myself i won't uh out in public right I don't really get drunk. Uh, I'm generally a happy drunk, though. I always have been. Yeah. 
Well, you don't have too many. You, head tra- you don't have you don't have much head trauma either, do you? No, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's another factor. Yeah, that's but that's, that's not a great combination and pills and everything else. Everything else, yeah, yeah. Combine that yeah. together, buddy. And yeah. stress. <laughs> I, I think ITP uh, and saying clown posse. Who I would love to. I know they get requested quite a lot. I would love to get them on the show. I'm just trying to get their details. Yeah. Uh, but when they work with Chris in uh, WCW, they, uh, I think they was doing something with Sean Oliver. You shoot, and it was like one word. And um, Benoit popped up, and they said intense. If there was a, if you could put a picture next to intense in the dictionary, it's Benoit. And yeah. ha- like you said, he was like like this in the locker room and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, the Reaper, yeah. Our Friday is going to be Paul, Jonah, and Jason. <laughs> um. Well, this Friday we got uh, Red Dog, Rodney Max scheduled. Mm-hmm. But I think definitely, um, due to the uh, due to the response that we got, we're definitely going to do it more often. Um, just stay tuned with the channel, and we'll keep you up updated. See, we don't have scripts. We don't have writers and stuff, man. We just, uh, you know, we go off the top of our head, you know, and call it on the call it in the ring, man. We're old school, baby. Next question. Yep, the uh, passing static. Thank you. Have y'all ever considered doing a video game live streams? You could make the CDR crew and have a mock Royal Rumble or Survivor Series. Isn't that what we're gonna do? We're gonna play the old video game. Yeah, so uh, Renee's, I would say Renee's main game was SmackDown v Raw, the first one, which would have been um, 2005 it came out, I think. I came out 2004, actually. And uh, one of the first uh, storylines, if you pick SmackDown, um, it's a love triangle between yourself, Tori Wilson, and Renee. And Tori Wilson is Renee's manager. So you pick whoever you want to be. And you get your first feuds against Rene Dupree. And if you defeat Rene Dupree at the pay per view, Tori Wilson will become your manager. Oh. And you also share a shower scene with her if you win. I'm finding this out like nearly 20 years later. I had a shower scene with her. Oh, no. If whoever I picked, for example, so fourteen year old me, <laughs> you can make yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. I made myself, and I'm with Tori Wilson in the shower, baby. <laughs> the mind of a fourteen year old, <laughs> right? Oh. Uh, it was that was a weird game actually, because um, uh, we're caught up on super chats. Thanks everyone. Um, no, we got another one. No, we don't. Wait. Yeah, we do. Oh, okay, no, we were caught up. Okay, sorry. Um, Keep going. So you had like four opportunities to get like four managers through the season mode. Okay. So your four managers was Tori, Stacy, Sable, and Trish. Okay. And every time you would win one of them feuds to get them as your manager, they would automatically like become your girlfriend. <laughs> well, you could finish the season with like them four as your girlfriends, which was awesome. <laughs> oh, I just missed yeah. those checks. Here we go, Renee. Snog, Mario, Void, Trish, Stacy, Tori. Oh, we're not going to use Kill. We're going to use Snub. All right, then. F, Mario, Void. No, I don't like the. Oh, Void. Void, Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. Trish is Canadian, so that means. She'd probably want to stay in Canada, as do I. So I'd probably marry her. And I'd F Tori again. Actually, oh, yeah. I don't know. I think Tori would make a great wife. Because I remember, like, I used to hang out with Mikey Bats. That was um, Billy Kidman's nephew. You know, right. at the same age. Yeah. And, like, I guess, like, when Billy and Tori were, were married, I guess she was, like, a great housewife. You know what I mean? Like she would like like him and Billy would be playing video games and she would cook dinner for him and stuff and yeah I don't know it's just I've seen so many hot girls just be like they know they're hot and they know that I'd be paranoid okay the second that I fuck up 
or do something wrong that they could leave and find somebody better or you know what i mean like you don't want that type of stress on your plate you know yeah it's just the trust factor but was there any uh stay on the topic was any incidents where you saw a WWE like diva and star like dating and you just saw it blow up in front of your face I had to always pick on uh, Shelly Martinez, man. Oh yeah, or like Melina and uh, Melina and Johnny Morrison. Yeah, with the whole Batista thing. Yeah, like that's one thing, man. Like, like why are you gonna screw around with another one of the boys' girlfriends, or you know what I mean? Or like Cena doing that to uh, Kendone, right? When he's yeah, yeah. Didn't Cena date Victoria in OVW? I don't know if they dated. Victoria was married. That's, that's a really story. Is. That that's a story that I don't want to say. But that was. I'll tell you that off the record. That's. If we ever get a Patreon, I'll start bringing out those stories. Oh yeah. That's something me and Renee spoke about. Everyone. So we noticed like there's a lot of returning people who comes every week. We appreciate every single one of you. And we vote, like, first and foremost, we want to do YouTube every week because it's great to interact with you. But everyone else seems to have a Patreon or a YouTube membership. And it's something I've spoke to with Renee about. It's possibly doing a Patreon and have exclusive content. So, because that's another thing. YouTube has been really, really hard on us lately with the censorship. So, like, especially, like, swearing, it's like, live stream the other night, I had to appeal that because that got demonetized because we say a few F words here and now. Well, and, to be fair, more than a few. Well, there was a few that night. <laughs> um, so we was thinking of possibly opening a Patreon and we'll have like exclusive episodes like, you know, raw, you know, we'll just won't care what we say, for example. And also a Discord server, so for everyone else to chat to each other and, like, me, Renee, Jonah, and, like, the other guys pop in and have a quick chat to use. Perhaps some with the tier systems, perhaps some merchandise perks, something like that. Uh, maybe get a free tea or, you know, a jumper once a month. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, like us doing a Patreon, like, let us know and we'll definitely discuss it further and um, just give you more content but obviously we need a bit of help to keep the lights on in the place and you know uh, basically do that so yeah if you're interested let us know if you're interested in a patreon and uh, we'll think more about it but till then Renee, i think we've got a couple more just popped up or one more just popped up super chat yeah uh, there we go uh new fan of the show matt escobedo hope i pronounced that correctly you can kill me if i didn't uh, Renee, which brand was better performing on Raw or SmackDown? And were you happy getting drafted to SmackDown? Raw was better. I was happy at SmackDown at first because I was getting a single push. But then once the feud with Cena was done, you know, and then that's when the, the Sharks came after you. You know what I mean? looking for any reason to bury you and you know mm. but tagging with Kenzo was okay I enjoyed it but definitely Rob but Smackdown when we went overseas was was crazy because Smackdown was very very popular overseas especially Australia yeah Australia is a place I miss I wish it was like because like my, my dad my dad was wrestling. He would he went over to Australia like two three years in a row, but he would stay over there for like three months. It's when uh, Johnny Doyle and Jim Barnett were promoting Australia. He was over there with like the original Sheik and guys like that. Him and Sheik were actually friends. Oh right, yeah. And uh, dude, he'd be. I think he was over there like in the '60s, and he'd come home with like twenty five grand saved. But think of it like 25 grand those days, that'd be like coming home with like 100, 70, 100. No, 100, 150 grand these days. Yeah. So imagine going over 
I mean, Australia, which is in the wintertime, which is their summer. It's a beautiful country. Like you go on the Gold Coast of uh, Australia and the beaches. I mean, it's paradise. Mm. And you go over there and work and huge crowds, awesome fans. And you come home with like 150 grand in your pocket. That's only three months out of the year. Right? And then, you know, saying you had a Japanese gig at a point in time where guys were getting paid 5, 10, 15, 20 grand a week, you know, in today's money, you can double that, right? Mm. The money ain't like that anymore, folks. Man, Thanks, Pants. <laughs> <Dude, dude. laughs> um, I was, uh, I had a look and uh, New Japan, they normally do that follow-up show after Wrestle Kingdom and uh, Okada and Omega was tagging and you could see the crowd, like, you know, just parts that were busy, but there was a lot what was, like, empty and I'm like, that's with Okada on the in Corcoran Hall the night after Wrestle Kingdom. Yes, yeah, Budokan, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it was the Corcoran Hall usually? Is... Oh, Corcoran, sorry, yeah. And it was there was empty seats. Well, I saw empty seats. Oh, are you sure it was the same? Really? Yeah, it's not. Uh... They normally do that show after Wrestle Kingdom and uh, wow. Omega. They announced, Omega and... they announced twenty six thousand. Uh, here's a secret. Here's a little info. They're, they're no different than American promotions. Yeah. Like they, they, they exaggerate their, their audience. Mm. So, but don't forget, man, like the, the, the COVID COVID's not done over there by a long shot. It's actually the other day they had the most deaths recorded in one day. So, but then again, the Budokan for Noah was completely sold out with nearly 10,000 people. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Just a bad camera angle, but I did see some empty seats, unless the other parts were full, like, you know what I mean? Well, Kuroko and all only fills about 1,400 people. Right. Yeah. So for them not... But don't forget, there's a lot of major shows happening in a row over there. Yeah. And the economy is pretty bad in Japan, too, folks. Uh, yeah. The yen ain't exactly the strongest there. Right. Uh, Rex, Discord server. Hell yeah, I'm in. There we go, Rex. Uh, yeah, a few people. Well, that's great. Here. I don't want to like uh, turn down all the loyal fans, but there's got to be at least what? You need at least what? A hundred? A hundred members? To, for it to yeah. <laughs> we'll probably open it. It'll probably just be us subscribed to it. <laughs> us and Rex Gardner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you, Rex. Uh, Love you, bud. But yeah, it's just the idea of one. You know, obviously, you know, if the interest is there, and if you want to see like some, like normally Renee and like all the guests, they don't sugarcoat it. But sometimes there's some things you can't talk about. Um, I figure with a Patreon, we could probably have the fans join us on the live stream, right? Like, yeah, I mean, that could be a you know pack for people. You know, you can interact on the shows with us, like chatting like how me and renee chats um you know we, we've been thinking about it we, we've got no details set out yet but it's just you know if you're interested and like i said youtube lately youtube's normally okay but lately they've tried to demonetize a couple of our episodes because of like some language that's been used and um you know and unfortunately me and renee was talking about just, we can't help it. it's just the way we speak <laughs> yeah i know Right. Well, we've yeah. got very limited vocabularies, haven't we, Renee? <laughs> well, I have, right. anyway. Right. Uh, what's your view on Molina as an in-ring wrestler compared to the others divas on it on her era of her era? I can't really, really remember watching any of her matches. <laughs> Sorry, I used to really like Victoria wrestling and Molly Holly and Jazz. Those are probably my three favorite in-ring. Hmm watch yeah but I always like Melina still do yeah she was sexy still is oh yeah Gunna Dragon are you an Arsenal fan Gunna Dragon uh Patreon rewards can include a light for Renee and a mic for James and a watch for Paul <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with your mic. I can hear you fine. Is it not the best? Like, I, I can hear me, but 
I'll tell you what it is though, Renee. Like when you hear some other shows, yeah, there is that difference when you can hear us. You, you oh. can, but the thing is, like I just use my phone, everyone, and you can't really get good mics for your phone. But um, I'm gonna be building a studio real soon, and um, it's gonna be in a few months, and then gear yeah, that's then I've got my own place. I can just do my podcast. I can have like a good display behind there, for, like make it look really good, and get a new laptop and mic thing. So hopefully, sign up for the Patreon and let's make it happen quicker. <laughs> well, shit, dude, I'm doing this on a laptop. You can get a really good laptop for four or five hundred quid. You know. Yeah, I might just do that even and just buy a uh, mic for it. But um, but no, I I am gonna have like a studio thing in a few months. So. Uh, it's gonna sound pretty good, so uh, bear with me till then. And he's a construction worker, folks. You know he's gonna get it done. Well, yeah, I mean I'm a builder, so I can I can save the cost of labor. It still right. charges me for materials, but you know. Yeah. Uh, Rex, thank you again. Uh, why are Japanese crowds so much more quiet? I know they're respectfully generally, but I like the buzz of a mad crowd on Sasha Banks' debut. Mercedes Monet, the crowd was quiet. Very good question. Okay. When we go to a theater, movie theater, or we go watch a live play, are we hooping and hollering or are we telling, shh, be quiet? Yeah, quiet. That's the way they are. That's their mentality towards it. They don't yeah. want to disturb the people. It's like they're watching live theater, right? Now, that's changed over the years and become more westernized, but for the most part, it's like us watching a live play, okay? The reason why they were quiet for uh, Sar- Sa- Sasha Banks? Sasha Banks. I guarantee you... 99% of that crowd didn't know who she was. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Okay. It's a total different world in Japan. Okay. Even though WWE goes there and they draw very well, New Japan fans are New Japan fans. They fall New Japan. It's like a sports team and they're totally into Japanese wrestling and that brand. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guarantee you, you have Edge show up, majority of the crowd would not know who he is. That's the truth. The guys who they would recognize would be guys that work there in Japan and have no one been on Japanese television. Or If I were to show up in New Japan, I don't want to sound like a big head, toot toot, whatever, but I would get a huge pop. Because right. I've been going over there for 15 years. Hell, I've been going over there since I was 19. Because I went there with WWE, right? So I've yeah. been over there for 20 years. <sighs> you understand? I will yeah. say this about her. I will say this about her, though. That hair she had, that was badass. How cool oh, was yeah. that? Wow, that was cool. You're like flames, it, right? Yeah. It's, um, no, I mean, I, um, I give her credit for going over. and Because, um, you know, uh, Guy Jin, I suppose you call it. There's not many guys and women that uh, obviously Alundra Blaze did, but and you, you get a few, but for her to make a debut at Wrestle Kingdom was pretty big for her. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what she can do, um, you know, over there. I think she's gonna be in a feud now with uh Kyrie Sane or Kyrie, as she's called in Japan. So, um, mm-hmm. and I think they're about having a match in America, so uh, it'll be interesting, but um, but that's the thing, like. New Japan is concentrated on being a world going worldwide more than ever, right? And I think they have a big show happening in California. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So it's, uh, and I think she really wanted to go over there because I think she really cares about the wrestling aspect of it. And yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Right. Arty Machine, thank you. Do you guys think Paul London looks a bit like George Harrison from the Beatles with that beard? <laughs> I've always said he looks a bit like John Wick, Keanu Reeves. Have you seen John Wick, Renee? Yeah, he looks like uh what's the bat the guy from Australia played Batman? Australia played Batman. Who was the Batman in the, the dark the dark night? Oh, Christian Bale is from Wales. He looks, oh, he's from Wales? I thought it was from yeah. Australia. He looks like, yeah, he looks like Christian Bale. I can see it, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, uh, there's the movie John Wick, Keanu Reeves. I always call him the John Wick of professional wrestling. All right. We're going to yeah. go for 25 more minutes, folks, because I got to cook a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of pizza? Uh, I think it was the works. Meat, cheese, onions, peppers. Grobe said, "James, force Renee and Paul to do AW. <laughs> That's never going to happen. <laughs> what, what to do? Watch AW watch alongs, and you'll get YouTube money rich. The content rants uh, would be great entertainment. I mean, that's what that JD guy does, doesn't he? Yeah, he does very well, especially for a guy who's never wrestled, right? Yeah. Um, but he's have based on New York. Huge have you got the energy to do rants, though? I haven't." see that's the thing like if I did if we had a Patreon I would definitely do it yeah but like to do it on here and then Jesus you got these dirt sheet writers who are purposely watching this just waiting for me to say one thing so they can post it on their web their web pages right so it gets hits oh they posted about Charlotte right I just made an observation and then you get, that's another reason why I'm not on Twitter because you know, you say one thing critical about someone's favorite wrestler and they'll just fucking dog the hell out of you and find things about your history. You know what I mean? So it's like, but yeah, if we had our own Patreon, I would definitely do it because I would see shit and you know me, I, I can't hold my true feelings. So Paul, good luck. Uh, I don't think Paul would, unless of course we had like a thousand members on our Patreon watching and, what what would be the what's the normal cost for a Patreon? Like ten bucks, twenty bucks? Uh, you you price it the way you want to. It can be anywhere from one dollar to screw it. Some people's got like hundred dollar Patreons, but you know. But um, I f like it, it depends. Like I, I would be fair with the fans. That's that's the thing because you know I try to be fair with people because you're not. Like you said, Renee, everyone's in a recession and things like that. But I, you know, you can have tier brackets. You could have like, say, a five dollar bracket, a ten dollar bracket, and a twenty dollar bracket, for example. Okay. And you know, um, and you know, you could have, say, a forty dollar bracket, and with that bracket, you get a free piece of merchandise every month as well, for example. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, we want to make sure we give all yous, you know, plenty of value for your money, and at the same time, we we me, Renee, and everyone else, we want to make sure, you know, it's financially beneficial for us as well because we need to keep the lights on the place. But, you know, I, I, let me and Renee, we've spoken about it a few times. We haven't really had a full, you know, think tank about it. But if loads of yous are interested, uh, I'm sure, you know, there's plenty of ideas for exclusive shows. Like I said, Renee could do an AEW watch-along. So instead of, like... A couple of the highlights, he'll tell you everything that happened, and you can hear him go full pelt on it. And you know, they, there could be other exclusive things we could do as well. So, yeah, um, yeah like so, we'll we'll think about it. Um, but we just want to make sure we're in a good position to do. It. That's why we want to hit 15k. I think when we if when we hit 15k, not if when we hit 15k, then I think that's when we'll start having some serious talks about it. Yeah. Yeah, let's just wait. Let's get through these super chats. We not got much time left. I'm getting yep. hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Joey B, thank you. Love you from now. Uh, Who would win between Takamichi Nuku and Kas Hayashi? Like in a shoot? Uh, if you want. <laughs> uh, I wrestled Kaz many times. He's actually very tough. Uh, Taka... I was in a six man with them. I don't know if we ever touched. So I don't know. But I know they're really good friends in real life. So he was ahead of his time, Tucker. Man, first live first and only WWE house show I went to in my life. Uh him and Brian Christopher were in the opening match. And you know how Sabu would jump, do the triple jump, you know, he'd jump on yeah. a chair, jump on the top rope, then jump. Taka ran across the across the ring, jumped to the top rope, and did a crossbody. Man, one yeah. of the coolest spots. I'll never forget that spot ever in my life. Yeah. Amazing. 
I was a big fan of Kai and Tai as well. They were entertaining. <laughs> mm. uh, Rex, thank you again. Uh, going over the best decision for Sasha in WWE, risk of getting stale. She'll develop new history, rivalries, learn new ideas. Sometimes staying too long can be a bad idea. True. It's like, uh, how That's can they true. miss you if you don't go away? You know, when you become stale in one territory, you switch to the other territory, then you come back and then, you know, see you in a different light. I mean, the one guy I look at, and I'm a big fan of this, uh, Sigler. He should I, definitely I'm, consider doing something like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's play, He's still getting paid really well. He's made plenty of money and good luck to him. And he's probably one off, if not the most talented person on the roster, but because he's always there, people doesn't care about him anymore. And yeah. this guy, he should have had like a bigger career than what he did. I know he's had... <laughs> He had the world title a couple of times, but it didn't really mean much because... Does anybody remember? Unless you're a diehard hardcore fan, you know? Yeah, you kind of forget they happened, basically. Um, so, yeah, sometimes people need to... Uh, I mean, um, Cody Rhodes, for example, left WWE, he was Stardust, went to Ring of Honor, went to New Japan, went to AEW, and he's come back a bigger stamp than what he ever was. He worked one show in New Japan, didn't he? So one show? I thought he worked a couple more. No, nah, he never toured over there. All right. Yeah. Well, ROH and uh, I think he done a stint in Impact as well. Okay. Um, dear Renee, I'll wait for the Patreon. Okay. All right, Grobmeister B. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, people saying <laughs> cheap, middle, and high, usually 5, 10, and 20. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, um, people saying James keeps talking about keeping the lights on. I do. <laughs> I got light right on. here, boy. Have you heard about the electric, uh, the energy bills in the UK? It's a real thing, guys. Yeah. And they've been smashing lights, James pays for it. <laughs> but, uh, oh man, the energy, uh, actually fuel started to go down. Thank God. Has it? Yeah, like you go by the gallon, don't you? But I go by the no, liter. We go by liter. All oh, right. So over here, it was peak. It was like pretty much two pound a liter. Wow. That was. I, I yet yeah, well yeah I mean a couple of places still is, um but I was normally paying like one pound ninety six a liter. But now there's a garage literally down the road from me, half a mile away. If that, it's one pound sixty one a liter. That's still a lot because we're I lot. Think around dollar fifty, but Canadian because two pound is like three dollars Canadian, right? So you guys are paying out the ass, man. Oh yeah, I mean, damn. This time last year, I think the average before it got hyped up was one pound twenty, maybe. Right. At one pound eighteen. Start of COVID, it was like. One pound nine, one pound ten. Wow. Yeah. So, um, it's it coming down this slightly, thankfully, especially for me because I travel a lot. <laughs> but, um, other than that, what's the other news? Anything, any other news? No, see, I think, that's, legit, I, think uh -huh. that, I think that's it for the news. Um, nothing else springs to mind. Um, like I said, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, they released the um. Royal Rumble poster. Um, is look Bushwhacker Luke on it? No. Hey, Can't no. Afford him. Uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's kind of like they're all staring in one direction. Cody Rhodes is on the poster. So rather, that means he's going to be at the show. I don't know. Okay. But like I said, uh, wrestling fans can be like detectives, and it's like lightning everywhere and like thunder, and people are like, oh, it means it's the rock electrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Right. Well, so, usually Royal Rumble is like their second most attended pay per view, isn't it, of the year, or is it SummerSlam? I think it's meant to be SummerSlam. SummerSlam's meant to be the second biggest, but the thing is, everyone's favorite is the Rumble. Yeah, when they do it right, when it's not the yeah. Shits. The last two years haven't been great. Last year, Brock won it; wasn't needed. The year before Edge won it, and 
He didn't even win the title at Mania. Right. And yeah. uh, that's the thing. I've always said I prefer when the winners of the Rumble is like a first-time winner. So uh, a couple more just popped in, Renee. Uh, Rex, thank you again. Uh, CM Pink will be abducted by Jericho's uh, aliens. <laughs> Jericho's too much, man. Too much. God. Yeah. Anybody else sick of him? Oh, well, all the dirt sheets got excited this past weekend because he turned up at PWG. Oh. Pro, pro Wrestling Gorilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro Wrestling Orangutan. Um, I saw, like, the venue, dude. It looks like they draw, like, 200 people, maybe? Yeah. Two, 300 people in the city of the state of Cali- city of Los Angeles, which has 10 million people in it. And- Business yeah, is you know, like I listen. I know some people like the intergender stuff. I know that I saw. I think I read the results, and they do a lot of that. I personally hate it, and I refuse I to. Hate be it. It. It's not because I'm sexist. It's just because I just no. Sorry. Well, if we mentioned it during the Dana White stuff. Like, um, don't put your hands on the woman. That's how I've been brought up. Me too. So I don't want to see it on TV, and they might enjoy it, but I'm like. I don't know. It's just I couldn't, especially as like a male wrestler. I I couldn't, and it's not to make it look believable or anything like that because it's it's a work anyway. But do you get satisfaction when you power bombing a woman or hitting a woman? Uh, it's like that Chris Dickinson one time. He was yeah. working for Massachusetts and he like power bombed that girl, like threw her like a razor's edge her right through the table and almost broke her neck and it's like yeah. like no that's it's sends little kids might watch that especially on and they might want to try that with one of their friends school friends in the schoolyard and break their neck and you know what i mean uh anyway i got we got one more super chat i think popped up yeah love to play with boys <laughs> love to play with boys <laughs> When we bring Kev back, we're gonna have to ask him about that. Program. Oh my god! I remember I watched well, that the other day. Fuck! So I'll tell you which one I did watch before we get to the question. Um, New Year's Revol- Revolution, two thousand and five. He cuts a promo. He says, "I hope uh, the Americans lose the war in Iraq, and uh, I can't wait to everyone's, everyone blow up something like you know the greatest country in the world, France." And he's like, and I'm also not a fan of the black people. Oh, my God. And then it was like, and if I had to go back in time and put someone in the anchor lock, it would be Jesus. <laughs> and I, I forgot he was interviewing them. I think Todd Grisham. What are you saying, Kit? What I'm trying to say is I can say anything. These people still cheer me. And they was all cheering them. As he was right, saying. right, right, right. <laughs> oh. um, it's pretty clear who Renee's least favorite people were in WWE. But who's his ultimate worst? Triple Nose, Bob Holly, JBL, Blubber, Jericho, Punk. Holly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just not because of the whole situation. But it, and that didn't bother me so much. What bothered me the most is how he would try to pretend to be your friend just to bury and get you fired. You know, that's what his, his, his main goal was, to get guys fired. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um... Like his book's complete. <laughs> it's, it's entertaining <laughs> fiction. Um, and he said, he, and he tried to bury Cody Rhodes and saying how Cody Rhodes went behind his back and things like that. Other way around. He buried every, like Charlie Haas buried the fuck out of him. Yeah. And they were tagging together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I think uh, it was Conman and Pritchard, they was doing an episode on Hardcore Holly and he was reading excerpts from the book. I think Cody's supposed to have texted Conman and he said, yeah, what Holly's saying is complete BS. You know how many guys called him out on his bullshit from that book? Quite so a few. Many. Quite a few, yeah. So yeah. the hardcore truth was the hardcore bullshit. It's the majority of everything he says was wrong. Like, uh, he told a story about Shane and I won the fight Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Jarrett, I heard it his podcast clip and says, no, that wasn't true at all. Like Hall, Nash, me, and I got Cody. Everybody's saying it's full of shit, right? 
Oh, my favourite one's the Nash one. The click. He said fat. The click was messing with him, so he went up to Kevin Nash and he said, let's settle it now. You say the F away from me, all this. And Kevin Nash, and this is when he was doing new shoot with Sean Oliver, and he said, if ever he said if that we really got his ass fired. <laughs> right. It was yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 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 good, uh, good old Spark plug, <laughs> Dr. Guerrero. Sparky, Dr. Guerrero. The juice, baby. The juice. Uh, Travis Berg, speaking of Cody, what's your thoughts on him? <laughs> um, in wrestling, you got to be political and you got to play, make the right moves. He did that. He made the right moves. Made the right friends, made the right connections, but at the end of the day, you got to be out for yourself, and he's definitely out for himself, and it's worked out for him. Mm. Yeah, love to play with boys. Can I rank them all, boys? What's that? So Holly's your worst. Who was saying second blubber? Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Uh, Blubber and Jerk Blubber. Then Jericho. Who else was there? Punk. Yeah. And Some are probably equal. Triple H. I mean, they're all... Yeah. Jericho tried to be friendly towards the end of my run there, but then he was on a podcast or something, and he said, uh, it's him and Blubber. And Blubber was talking about the resistance, and then Blubber was like, yeah, they were, you know, they weren't that... And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jericho's like, yeah, yeah, especially Sly because he was just past friend. Like, what the fuck do YouTube assholes know about what my career and what I've done and what I've accomplished post-WWE? More than probably anyone. Trust me. Was, I'm sure you tell me this was like when we first started doing the podcast that Jericho had an attitude with you because he tried to work your dad's territory and yeah, like, like yeah. Said, like, uh, it was closed by a year. yeah. Yeah, he said, uh, yeah, I tried sending your dad uh, a tape and uh, I didn't hear back. I guess I wasn't good enough. I go, Jericho, what year was this? He was 91. I go, do you realize my dad shut his territory mid-1990 because he was losing money? Yeah. He, had lost, he had lost his television. He yeah. tried. He brought in Harley Race. He brought in Dynamite. Kid, uh, or Dynamite. Yeah, Dynamite was 1990, yeah, or 89. I forget. Hmm. He tried, but, you know, he worked too hard to – to make the money he had. Don't forget, he didn't he didn't come from money. He was an orphan, so he wasn't gonna lose the money he made. So he shut down his territory. Really? So, huh? An orphan, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well. yeah, both my grandparents died when he was ten or eleven or something. He got oh, well. sent to an orphanage in Quebec. And if you know anything about the orphanages in Quebec, if you do your research or orphanages period in that point yeah. in time in the fifties, yeah. It's yeah. So like a lot of stuff he never told me about, but I had to hear through like my cousins and stuff. My yeah. Mom. Uh, right. Let's just say he had a really rough life. Oh shit. We just got a load of super chats right before. Okay. We're going to finish these off. <laughs> we're going to finish these off. I got to make my pizza. Last orders, everyone. That's it. Last uh, call. Raven Eastwood. Thank you. Uh, new fan of the show. Uh, when you was in WWE, did you ever ask for new entrance music? It is strange you was the only person in Larry's distance not to have your own theme music. Yeah. Yeah. I think the entrance music was over. As soon as the people would hear it, they would mm. boo because they knew it was, you know what I mean? Because at one point in time when I was on SmackDown, yeah, Larry's distance was using the same music. <laughs> yeah. Are you that fucking lazy? Like, oh, you guys ain't worth it. Just keep the same music. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Javon Richards, ever met Awesome Kong? Thoughts on that? Never met her. Um, incredible. I've seen some of her work. She was good. She spent a lot of time in Japan. I mean, she should have gone farther in WWE, but I think she got pregnant, right? Yeah, I think she lost the baby as well. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely should have gone further in, in WWE. I think she would be a really good player there. And uh, 
think that's the last one. Uh, no, there's a couple more. Uh, where do you, where do you for likes of Batista and Booker rank? <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I Booker actually tried to help me when I was in WWE, and then when we worked in France, uh, I kind of got mad because he didn't want to do business with me the right way. Uh, ego. Oh, it's going to get on the internet. Oh, what? Is Paris too close to Houston? F- book? You know? But I remember after our match, she realized that, okay, Renee is over because this is France. and as Because he never seen me work as a baby face, right? Mm. But uh, wink, wink. I'm just as... I'm better baby face than I'm heel. Trust me. And uh, he would put me over to all the boys in the back and all this other shit. And, uh, but yeah, I don't like your friend, Bill Goldberg. He fucked me up. And uh, yeah. Anyway, next question. How much did you hate ECW? A lot. Cause they didn't pay. I would have loved it if I was making money. I interviewed uh, just incredible. Yeah. And, um, he went to pay for a ticket and he looked and his bank balance was empty. Yeah. Yeah, I was making my downside and that's it. And at that point in time, they were trying to, uh, WWE was trying to process a green card for me, but they were taking the money out of my pay. So, yeah. There's times where uh, I didn't have enough money to rent a car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, ECW sucked. For me say, uh, Where's guy to travel with and why? <laughs> Bob Ollie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob Ollie. Why? He was just an asshole. Yeah. Right. That's us caught up, Renee. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much. Uh, I know we weren't as as funny and as humorous as we were this past Friday, but I want to thank everybody for joining in and now I can go make my pizza. So this Friday, Rodney Mack, Red Dog is returning and it's going to be great to catch up with them. And uh, any other announcements? Uh, yeah. Um, like I said, uh, Renee's got uh, some of these uh, in ring gear uh, for sale on eBay. I'm going to get the link and post it in the description, but I'll post it on the community tab tomorrow as well. So yeah. everyone can see it. And uh, yeah, grab yourself a, a bit of history there. If you're a big fan of the show and big fan of Renee, then that's a great opportunity for one of you. Oh, well, yeah. it's three separate lots, basically. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity for a couple of years to uh, get this. And um, yeah, like Renee said, we've got um, Rodney uh, this coming Friday. We've got guests booked up for the rest of the month from beginning of February. So we've got plenty of guests coming on. And um <laughs> what else? Uh, yeah, um, like I said, if you're interested in us making a Patreon, give us a 15k first, spread the word, and then we'll have some serious discussions about it and uh, try and give you some uh, exclusive content. But, Renee, you're going to go and watch Raw now eating your pizza? Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> See you guys this Friday. Au revoir. Bonsoir. <laughs>